All right. Hello. Hi, students, artists. Hi, it's Miss Rosen. Um, I'm trying to show you, well, I'm showing you how to use your phone editing capabilities with a screen. I don't know why screen went like that, but with a screen recording thing. So uh, that's what I'm doing now. We'll go here to my photos and I'm going to show you how to edit a couple things. I'm going to start with the black and white image because a, um, a lot of you have pencil things and um, black and white things. And if you have a black and white image, it should look black and white. So I'm going to click on the edit button in the top right. You can do the auto. Oh, sometimes it's nice. I don't love it. I don't like these harsh lines. I, I don't like it. So I want to show you some things that tend to work better. I don't use these filters. This one's in the middle because it should be the best representation of your piece. And it shouldn't be just as I'm going through, like it shouldn't be a gray paper or like a warm paper if it wasn't a gray or warm paper. So if you're doing black and white, noir isn't bad and mono isn't bad. But the idea is basically, see noir is giving me those lines that are really strong. I don't love those. I want them to see my, my shading. I'm going to go mono to start just to make it the black and white. Otherwise for color, I don't use those filters at all. So um, that would be the only time. The first thing I tend to do is the crop and straighten. As you can see here, it's straightening, not really straightening the way I want. So on, and I'm, I'm using an iPhone, so I can do things here with this, that, and I'm gonna have Miss Nix hopefully help us out with an Android to show us things there. But I want this to be there as straight as I can make it. So if you in the little circle, you can go back and forth. If you have a, it's an uneven image and you need to, if I click on this, I can scroll this way and skew it. If you don't get a nice straight picture, always try and make your camera exactly like the same plane as your image so that you don't have to skew it these different directions. But if you need to, this is an, a fabulous option for you. If you take it and it's not straight, you can always click on the top right corner for rotating, rotate is a picture. And then um, that's another skewing option in the top left also. Did I say right? Top left. So first thing I would do is to crop so it's just your image and then get a nice even layout on the page. There's a little bit extra border up here I don't want. I want only my artwork, no mat, no frame, things like that. Now, I'm gonna click on, on the bottom, this looks like a little clock or a gauge kind of thing. Um, again, I don't love the auto, I wanna control it as the artist. I can control this exposure so I see things, again, I should see the white of the page and I should see my dark lines and I should see my nice gradations. So exposure can work well. Brilliance, I don't use brilliance as much. You're welcome to play with it. I like highlights because I want my whites to be white and I want to see the grays, so I'm going to adjust highlights, making sure that those whites are pretty white. Notice if I go too far, I lose some of those nice medium grays. I want to show them my shading ability, those AP readers, so I'm not going to go too high. Shadows, I want to see the full range of values, especially in a 3D-esque drawing. Oh, too much, too much, too much. I like this better. This way, more shadows, less shadows. What do I like? Here, here. Um, contrast, can you can play with, make sure you get your grays. But like I said, middle grays, lights, darks, I tend to do that over brightness. Black point is getting the blacks to come out. See here, when I when it did it, it did it for me automatically. Those became their own stark lines, which I didn't like. No color, so I don't need to worry about the last two. Basically, I have white, I have lots of nice grays, I have a black, I've cropped it nicely, it fills the page nicely, it looks like I'm on a white page. I might recrop and get that little smudge off the top done, but you get the idea. So this one is done, done. Now I'm just saving it to my phone. I'm going to talk about a color photo. Now I didn't get the plane perfectly correct. I wasn't exactly perpendicular to the wall when I took this picture. So let's see, I'm going to click edit, see what happens for me. If I go to the crop tool on the bottom, look at that, it straightens it for me. Isn't that fabulous? Again, if I don't like how it straightened it, I can continue to woo woo move things around here, adjust the edges, things like that. I'm going to come in just by taking my thumb, pulling in my crop tool. It's actually a little bit, um, not quite straight. So I'll go a little bit straighter. Now notice the way this is hanging on the wall, there's a little bit of shadow there. It's the edge of the painting. It doesn't matter that much. I don't think it makes a difference in the rest of the painting. I am going to take that off. Done. So 
I've cropped it, I've skewed it. I have only my image there today, so that works. Today, go back to my edit button. And I'm not at all gonna touch these filters because look at that, oh, yucky, yucky. That's not my painting. That's not what I did. I want the readers and the AP graders to see my work. So I might do some things with exposure because the light wasn't fabulous on the wall. It was a little bit brighter, not too bright. Oh, no, it's not highlighters in the field, it's flowers. So there we go. Brilliance highlights. I wanna see the whites on the page. Hmm. What about shadows? Let's bring those out a little bit. I don't want to go so far that I lose the dark shadows or go this way that they seem like holes on the page. I just want to make sure I see all the way to a dark value. Contrast. I think I liked it where it was. Brightness. What about my brightness? Nah. I'm going to go to these colors, the saturation, because I want to make sure it doesn't look overly saturated, that it looks fake, but I do want it to be, see now it's dark. Why is it so dark? That's, ugh, that's like greeny yellow. Eek. Let's not mess with the vibrance at all on here. Um, temperature. I can play with that. You get the idea. Just play. And it, it helps to actually, after you've taken the picture, look at your actual artwork and see, is this exactly what I see? Is this how I want it to look so that it is the best representation of my artwork? That's what you're looking for. So I'm going to say fabulous. I don't know that it really is, but you know, done. So I have this piece that I have exactly I want, and then I have this piece exactly as I want. I can go back and select and then send these final ones to my um, myself, or what I can do is send them individually. So let's say I just do one, and that will help me see the size. Maybe do one to yourself individually to see the size it's going to be, and because when you send it, it will tell you the size. So I'm going to do my little send button in the bottom uh, left corner and then I'm going to um, let's see mail it to myself to my L Rosen at Leiden subject is gobbledygook that's ooh, chihuahua sure that's fine and then mail here we go and you see it's telling me it's 1.8 megabytes now that I've cropped the image in order to upload this to the uh, AP site, it has to be less than three megabytes. They will won't accept an image larger than that. So if you're looking and see that your camera takes pictures smaller than that, I like to do somewhere between two and three megabytes. If it's a little bit less, that's fine. But that way they can zoom into your image and see the resolution just fine. So somewhere around that size is great. Click that, it's now sent. And then when you get that image back, um, in your student drive, you'll be able to save it to your AP art folder so that you have your final cropped uh, edited images. But the easiest way at this point to get your paintings and drawings and collages and all those things into your, um, your portfolio online is to just take the pictures on